Who's that on a birthday line? It's killer. It's killer. Nah, I need that real energy. Okay, yeah, fine. Come on. <clears throat> Who's that on a birthday line? It's killer. It's killer. And killer, what's your zodiac sign? Sagittarius. Sagittarius. And how old are you on this day? So you fucking uh, up. Hook, you see? Oh, it's today your birthday. But it's not though. It's today your birthday. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow. How will you be tomorrow? I'm gonna fucking be <laughs> 30 years old. <laughs> old as fuck. Come wow, on, as fuck. like damn. Go killer. It's your birthday. Go, Go killer. killer. It's your birthday. Today <laughs> we're talking about. <laughs> boundaries um, <laughs> Boundaries are important now I said Outside of my kids Boundaries are the greatest thing I ever created And that, that shit hit And um, I think that boundaries are important For a few reasons uh, It keep, it can keep you out of your feelings And kind of spare yourself In a mm-hmm. lot of situations It can also set the tone of respect That you want In a lot of situations And it can also Kind of pace Definitely. A lot of situations And make sure that you're moving at the right pace and not moving too fast. So boundaries can be used. Boundaries is a tool to be used in a lot of different ways. It also can um we're gonna get into this later, but it all it also I feel like setting boundaries early can save relationships and testing boundaries boundaries early can save relationships. Kinda, you know, not testing in a way of like in a cynical way of like, let me just do some bogus shit to see mm-hmm. how somebody react, but testing in a way of of like, okay, I'm not gonna tiptoe around what's really going on. I'm gonna actually like put all the cards on the table and see where this person draw the line, and that that might tell me whether I want to be with them or not. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit later for anybody who's not following that. But welcome to Terry Rosen podcast, featuring Killer Cam. None other than y'all already know. Brought to you by Killer Cocktails. Absolutely. Um, damn, Boogie's not here. But My real is here. Line. Attendance. Real's here. We're here. That's it. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but um, nonetheless, Killer Cocktails, y'all already know. Gallons on deck, back selling. Gallons only, though. So like I was saying, um, it's everything that I wanted to be in the beginning. So um, if you need gallons for events, just hit me up. The DMs for sure, open. for sure. And the DMs are open for uh, my pod class. The pod class is $20 right now. I'm not going to let y'all know when that's going to expire but the pod class is twenty dollars and it's basically all the all the knowledge that i have on podcasting that i've acquired over the last four years and you know it's just going to save you a lot of money and a lot of time from buying the wrong things promoting the wrong way um set, telling you what apps to get on to grow how to use those apps the con- type of content to put on different apps everything like everything it's, it's too much to even talk about definitely worth it for twenty too much to even talk about it, it's definitely <clears throat> a deep dive into it and it's a webinar you could you know Go in there and move mm. at your own pace. You okay. know what I'm saying? It's broke up in different lessons. It's homework assignments and that to help you find your niche, help you format your show, help you write the first season of your show, um, mm. help you pick a niche that and think about what business is aligned with that niche so you can get sponsorships and things like that. And speaking of sponsorships, if there's any small businesses who want to be promoted on Terry Rosen podcast, hit us up. Please do. We're here. We we're doing numbers on the stream on these streaming platform. We are. We're doing numbers and I don't mind sending you those numbers so you can see. For proof. For proof. Definitely so we got make the receipt. A deal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we can talk. You feel me? But yeah. Foodie with a booty? Foodie with the booty. So um today I went out to brunch uh right. for an early birthday. And I went to the whale. I feel like People are onto the whale. I don't think the whale is really a secret or whatever. But I like the whale because of the ambiance. Um, the staff is just so personable and they're always super sweet. Um, they accommodate you. We got there. I didn't get the chance to book the table. It was late, like it was last minute. But they had a no show. They sat us nearly immediately. So um the food is amazing. Their brunch food and their regular menu. The fucking drinks are great as well. Um, they have like mimosa towers, a hundred ounces, one hundred and thirty ounces, and one hundred and sixty-five ounces. So they just like connect it to your table, and like you just drink. And that's a lot of fucking mimosa and champagne. 
How much, how, what size did y'all order? The biggest size. Then? So I, I actually just chose to try different drinks. So I had the Cherry Mule. Um, there was like the Bloody Maria, the Bloody Mary. Um, there was a Mascal Martini. Um, it was good. It was great. Mm. It was okay. great. Okay. It sounded lit. It sounded lit. Shout out to the whale. Definitely. Um, things like that. So jumping straight into the topic of boundaries, I want to kind of start off by telling everybody some of my own personal boundaries, right? Um, actually, let me get to this. Yeah. So some of my own personal boundaries when I'm dating somebody. And these are boundaries that apply to every single person I'm dating. Then of course I got a few boundaries that might come up. Like while we're dating, you might do some shit that be like, okay, let's let's nip this shit in the bud. Mm-hmm. Right the fuck now. All right. Um, so one of my first boundaries that apply to everybody I'm dating. If you switch the plans, I pick the day. Mm. That's one of my okay. rules. So if we got a date planned and you say like, you know, oh, I can't do that. Like, you know, something came up, da, da, da. How about whatever? It's going to be now. Nah, I'm going I'm to pick. The day, because I don't like I like I gotta know you respect my like time. they're completely in control. They're too in control if they cancel. Yeah, and, and I, it ain't decide even when for sure. It ain't even yeah. about being on like some petty game shit. But I gotta know you respect my time, and I gotta let you know that I don't like my time ain't just like. So how you feeling if shit. like you do set the day and then it happens again, or they can't? Um. If it happened once or twice, it depends. Like, if we got a good rapport, then that might be okay. You, shit like that, I just play by ear. I can't say, like, mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to be like, nah, I ain't fucking with it. But I got to just play it by ear. Um, but, yeah, if, if I get the vibe that you just ain't on nothing, nah, it's over with. You sure. know what I'm saying? But that's definitely <laughs> one of my top ones. If you set the day, I mean, if you switch the plans, I set the day. If you're two hours late, I'm canceling. Damn, two hours is long. I feel like an hour is yeah. Is, that that would be my limit right there. Nah, that's expected though. <laughs> like, like I know if a woman tell if I say we are going here at four o'clock, I know you're ever a black person. Fuck a woman. Anybody say we are gonna be here at four o'clock? It's not happening at four o'clock. I know that already. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if I say you know, uh, be ready. I'm gonna be there at four. I know you probably gonna be ready at four thirty, four forty five. That's just the the norm. You know what I'm saying? That's just the norm. Mm-hmm. I I know you. I don't. I want know to you even, not talking. To I, like what? I be ready. Like I be ready. It's what it's, be happening? It's, what the fuck? It's my process getting out the house that takes the longest. Okay. So, but whatever. All right. All right, Cree probably be on your heels. Yeah, absolutely. Like, okay. we you see that. But either way, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I get, you know, so I, I say two hours because I know like the hour is just, that's regular grace period. I ain't even counting that. You know what I'm saying? But like uh, another hour, mm-hmm. you pushing it. Mm-hmm. You pushing it for real. So it's like, I'm just going to cancel the plans. Just ain't going to be no like, oh, that the plans is for four. Ain't gonna, you ain't going to hit me like, oh. You know, oh, let's do seven. Yeah. Or yeah. Or especially no, yeah. if I'm ready for you. Oh no, nah, it's yeah. if I'm dressed. Oh no, nah, it's oh, it's super dead. Now, if you if I say, are oh, we gonna be here for wool, and you hit me up at noon or something like way before mm-hmm. ahead of time and tell me, then that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Because that let me know. That's yeah. kind of showing me you kind of respect my time a little bit. But it's like if you if like I I say four and it's past four o'clock and now you're you get to play with the time. Nah, it's over with. Yeah. If we ain't there by six. Or oh, I feel like we ain't gonna get there by six. Like, yeah, let's it's just a rap G. Yeah. So that's another yeah. one for me. Uh what else? Uh this is this is one that I don't exercise that I want to start exercising. Mm-hmm. If we not exclusive, you can't spend a night. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna spend a night. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is a few reasons. Um, for one, if you like the person. Waking up with them can be too much. Detrimental. <laughs> yeah. Detrimental like, for it, sure. It could be too much. If y'all not exclusive and you waking up with this motherfucker. Yeah. And you like them, it could be too much. Yeah. If you don't like them, it's going to be, they're going to be hella in the way. Right. Right. Yeah. That's It's, it's irritating. It's, it's going to irritate. Yeah. It's going to be like, yeah. Yeah, Both this. is bad. Both is bad. But no, I feel that. Like, I, if you go back to some old shows from last season- You'll see me standing on my shit about not spending the night, and then 
I just totally dropped the ball this year. <laughs> <laughs> like I totally dropped the ball this year. <laughs> like thanks for being honest. Really yeah. dropped the ball, but um, no, you're right. That's definitely. I think that I'm gonna have to add that. Okay. To mine. Okay, for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. For sure. All right. Um, and what else? Um, I'm gonna say the rest of my play in the show. What you got? Okay, so um, I was speaking on, I think it was a couple shows ago, the phone calling. Like, that's definitely a personal boundary that I set early on. What do you mean a phone calling? Just like calling late at night, calling after a certain time. Oh, got like, you, got you. I just can't, you know, so I do set that boundary. Um, and I just pretty much hope that the person will respect it. Um, you probably got like once or twice for us to have this conversation. And then if you just keep like ignoring it, then it's like it's pretty smoked. Gotcha. Um, uh, another boundary when I'm dating somebody, and we set like a date, like a time and a place or whatever. If I hate when I don't hear from the person that day, uh, ah, yeah. like I hate when there's no communication beforehand. Beforehand, to the point where you're like, "Damn, is we still doing this?" Right, because it makes me feel like no, and then I'm one of those people where like I'd be so wrapped up in my own shit that sometimes like I might rather not go on this date. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like you need to be communicating, like so, and then like that kind of goes into like you want to kind of like excite the woman. I was going to say this going to not foreplay. foreplay. I want to say foreplay because we're <laughs> in such a period with no sex, but that's kind of yeah. where I was at with it. But let's just say light foreplay in the aspect of like, if y'all been texting and talking already, y'all already flirty and whatever. So this is giving you time to flirt. Like, hey, oh, can't wait to see you later. Like, da -da -da -da. like you're just not going to say nothing the whole day. Can't deal with it. Can't. So it's just like, that's definitely one of mine. Um, the fucking driving, the picking me up. That's a boundary for me for real. Yeah. And I be sounding crazy. Like niggas be making me feel like I'm crazy when I say that because I have cut niggas off. Right. For saying that they're not going to pick me up for the first date or at yeah. all. That's my love language. Being driven around should be a love language. Just for you? No, not just for me. I'm going to take a poll. Okay, take a poll. I am. Take a poll. On Instagram. I wish I had my phone. Oh, I do have my phone. I'm, I'm going to do a poll. Okay. Um. So I did three. You did three. Cool. We even. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, give me an example of a time you had to set a boundary, like a new boundary, because somebody just did something that was just like, all right, nah, we cutting it. Mm, I, mm, damn. I give you one. Okay. So, I'm talking to a chick. I told the story uh, on the last season mm -hmm. about the chick who came to my crib at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. So just to, <laughs> for anybody who didn't see that episode last season, basically I was talking to this chick and uh, we was talking for a minute. And I, I'm on the south side of Chicago. She was living up north. Which is far. It's probably forty five minute drive. Jesus you know what I'm saying? But she was open up. In no traffic. That's no damn. There no traffic. That's forty five minutes. No traffic. I mean, when I say up north, I mean like past Sheffield. I figured like, when you said forty five like, minutes, like the end it. of like Lakeshore Drive ends and you still driving north. Yeah. Type shit. Like anyway. Tui, like all the way. Yeah, yeah facts yeah, that way. Yeah. Far as fuck. So um, anyway, she was she was opening up a store on the south side near my crib. So. You know, she'll be working in the store late night trying to get it ready for the grand opening. Mm -hmm. And she'll try to spend a night every night. Mm. So it was kind of like, almost kind of forcing it on me a little bit. Because it's like, damn, like, she might be leaving at one in the morning. Like, damn, you know, I'm tired of seeing a long flight. Drive. But it's like, we just talk, though. Like, I got other bitches. You can't just be assuming spend, that, yeah, that you, you can't just going to spend a night every night. Every night. That's like, crazy. You feel me? So I didn't set the boundary, though. So that's the thing. Like, I didn't set that boundary. So it's like, if it was a night to where I had something else going on, it was a problem. She was like, damn, why can't I come tonight? You let me come every other night. Mm, so you know what I'm saying? So damn. that's a that's an example of not setting a boundary. That, that wasn't even an example I was going for. But that that was the example I didn't set. So anyway, fast forward. Uh, one day, she had my crib. She like, I'm going to go out with my friend. She come to my crib to get dressed. And then she dip out. We texting or whatever like that. And she like, oh, I'm going to come back to your crib about the, you know, we have our little friends and our little girls night, whatever the case may be. So I'm like, okay, cool. So we texting and around like, Ten some, and I, I forgot exactly how I went to the show so long ago. But around ten some is the last time I had texted her, and I don't think it went through. 
So, of course, you know, like I said, I'm waiting on her to get to my crib. She said she's coming back later. So, I'm just up doing whatever I'm doing. And uh, I probably called her around like 12, you know, the shit. Mm-hmm. Went to voicemail. But this is before Do Not Disturb was really... Uh, it might have been a thing, but I don't know. It's like two mm-hmm. years ago or some shit. So, uh, you know, her phone was dead. And I knew her phone was dead. So, I'm looking like, all right, what's going on? Bro, this bitch put up my house at 6 o'clock in the morning. Like the sun was up. And I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, what's up? And my thing is like, we single, so if you wanted to do you, you could have just done that, but stay where the fuck you was at, Why or went home, or just, or told me just like, hey, I'll holler at you tomorrow. I'm gonna go out with my girls. I'm gonna holler at you tomorrow. You ain't have to do the weird shit. So she come, she pull up and was like, I can tell you what. And I'm just like, I don't want to know the story. I'm cool. <laughs> she like, oh, I ain't even do shit though. I'm, okay, cool. I believe you, but you don't got to tell me the story. And then the story was some shit like, um, we was. Right, like that's the thing. <laughs> that's when you know a motherfucker is you just you dragging it, like you dragging it. We talked about voluntary line. You are dragging it, like you are just offering it all up on a like, silver geez. platter when I didn't even ask. So she like, oh, we was uh, we was doing like my phone died, and we was up all night doing TikToks, and I just forgot to talk to my phone. And then she can't even like you ain't even a bad lie. So my boundary I had to set in that situation was like for her specifically. I was like, "Gee, if it's past that. like one o'clock, don't come to my house." That's and that's lenient. Like if it's past one a.m. and shit in Chicago closed at two, so I feel like it wasn't lenient. I feel like it was strict. Mm. But I'm like, "Gee, if it's past one a.m., gee, just go to the crib, go wherever the fuck. You wherever you gonna go, but don't but come don't to my come crib. Don't even <laughs> don't call me or nothing. Like you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't mad that she did. Because it's just like we just we just talking. Like mm. we not." And locked in unserious, and I don't think that much of you to think that you mm-hmm. wouldn't do some shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool, but the lying and the goofy shit, is, I don't got time yeah. for it. So it's like, hey, if it's past one o'clock, you know, don't, yeah, don't even hit me. You feel me? Mm. What'd you think? You, you um, yeah, so I never thought that I would have to like set the boundary of like a nigga pulling up unannounced. That's, I feel like that's like obvious, like. Don't do that. Like, Just don't do that. Yeah. Like, I didn't think that I would have to tell anybody that. But I've had multiple instances. For sure. Honestly. Um, of niggas, like, pulling up. But there was this one particular instance that made me realize, like, okay, this is, like, you say that was, like, the boundary for her. Like, no, nah, this is the boundary <laughs> for everybody because that shit is crazy. So, um... I had broken up with this nigga, but we had been broken up. Um, we was like kind of on the back and forth for like six months. He was kind of like doing a little cheating and whatever. Woo. So I was like in the process of like kind of trying to branch. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sometimes that process can be a little drawn out or whatever. But we finally broke up. And um, I had this other nigga that I honestly like, I really liked him. <laughs> like, so... Yeah. Um, I was kicking it with the other nigga and um, my ex had been trying to like argue with me for like days like and I was just not replying not saying shit like nothing Um, so there was this one matter of fact it was my grandma's birthday and um, me and the dude had went out with uh, my family to you the, brought the nigga around the family and did the new nigga and did it, it, it was like I'm talking about like six months drawn out like we're broken up for this long on and off though constantly I've been like this nigga All right. so I'm not fucking with him when we trying to get our shit together but when you cheating and you going off with these other bitches and you dumping me you breaking up with me like All I'm right. kind of so like nigga been in the kicking. mix he yeah. just you just got it solid just, I just couldn't be serious with you because I got this whole other shit going on right. so um whatever boat with the nigga da, 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 whatever come up pull up to the crib the timing <laughs> like <laughs> it was just so bad like I'll Never forget, literally getting out of the car, this nigga car, and my ex literally like riding like past as I'm getting out the car with the other uh. nigga. That's when I was like, oh. What'd he do? Wait, what the nothing. fuck happened? Well, he, he just kept driving? Anything. Yep. So he just saw you and then just started kept talking driving. crazy on the phone or something? It, I don't even think, no, matter of fact, he, okay, so after he saw that, we went in the crib, whatever. At that point, like, I really didn't give a fuck. Like, I was kind of like, damn, hate that you had to see it that way. But, like, at the same time, like, you smoked. Like, that cheating, that all that shit, you're smoked. So, he has sent me a text message, like, on some, you know. Going crazy. And I'm just like, 
I told the nigga, I'm like, um, I'm gonna reply to this. And that's it. But it wasn't like me replying, oh no. It was just like, um, don't know why you went full up to my house. Right. We ain't spoke for days. Like you ain't. And he just like, nah, you ain't gotta say nothing. So like it was pretty it was cut dry. Right. Cause I know seeing that in action was kind of just like, damn, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't fuck with him no more. So like you saying the boundary for all niggas is like if you don't pull up, pull up to my house what? unannounced. Yes. Just don't pull up to, the thing, you, you know, pull up to my yeah. house unannounced. I should probably cut it's weird. people for t- more toxic like that. I had to, somebody pull up unannounced. But I got the ring doorbell now too, so it's kind of be like, yeah. I love it because like, you know, motherfuckers don't know. I need to install. You know what I'm saying? Until like, they get it look close and be looking dumb. Like, like damn. Like, damn, like, I'm caught. He don't see me. Stupid ass. He don't see me, shit. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah little yeah. dumb ass. And I might send you the video too. I know, would. I, I, that's some shit that I would do. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. at five o'clock. Dumbass. <laughs> Should have shot your ass. <laughs> oh, at her, at her feet or something. Yeah, I know she. I know she watching this. <laughs> I know she. Fuck. If for she sure. was sitting on that porch at five a.m., she's definitely watching this. For sure. For sure. Um, <laughs> what do you think that is the most important reasons for you to have boundaries on a personal level? If this can. Um, on a personal level for myself. Yeah, like what are you using your boundaries for? Is it to, is it to just set a, a level of respect with people? No, it's for, it just to, no, it's for safety. Mm, it's for safety. See, men got to, women got to worry about shit that men don't got to worry about. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. It's for safety. Okay. It's um, fine. just like, you know, at the end of the day, like we could, regardless of whatever boundary I'm talking about that I'm speaking of, like we could talk about safety in an aspect of like, don't pull up to my crib unannounced. Like niggas do be crazy. And if like I'm not on the same, if I'm not holding you to the same standard that you're holding me, like you looking at me on a different plateau and you pull up to my crib and I am dating and you not my nigga and it's just like, hey, yeah. you might do something crazy. Like yeah. I was blessed that my ex didn't do anything. He had a lot going for himself. Right. <laughs> but like uh, every everybody's not like that. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? So that's safety. Like, don't pull up to my house. I can be doing anything. I you a nigga pull up to your crib unannounced. I don't fucking you ain't never met my kid before. I'm walking out the crib with my kid or I got my kid. And it's just like it's too don't like don't infiltrate intimate right. moments, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. Um shit. In regards to like safety with just like my my heart. Safe, safety with my heart, like guarding my heart. Because at the end of the day, you can get super caught up in liking somebody and you kind of like giving them little passes, like small passes, and you're not standing on your boundaries. Yeah. You get your heart broken or like you get hurt. So it's like this, this for precaution. Because um, once you get caught up, like it's, it's hard to fucking like fall back. Spending the night fucking like... Saying certain shit, and I think that I have that kind of bad. Saying certain shit, like saying, "Oh, like that's a boundary for you." Like I need to set that boundary for myself. <laughs> now that I'm saying it oh. out loud, because the lack of exclusivity, I need to stop saying certain things. Like, like because like I'm just nutting me. It's the like, word what play. Whoa, no, <laughs> not too far. Um, it's the word play though. Like you know what I'm saying. Like I just don't want to be like. Shit that I would say to my nigga. Like, even if I like this nigga like that and would like him to be my nigga, he's not my nigga. So that's a that's a boundary that I should set. But no, my boundaries are just to remain safe. Um gotcha. and every aspect. Pillow a boundary? Yeah. Fuck. Um No, it was actually the funny thing is, I don't know how I ended up like this, because it was supposed to be this, but I don't know. I think it was when y'all told me the fist thing. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna have to be over here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Um, another thing about setting boundaries is this. Um, I think that when you're in a relationship, right, and you want to go long term with somebody, it's important to set boundaries and not dance around things that could be problematic. And I, I talked about this at the beginning of the show, but just to dive deeper into it, let's say, for example, let's say we're in a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. We're together, and let's say I got different things going on with my family. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, my mom might need a lot of financial help. 
let's say. Mm -hmm. But we're building together. We're we're building towards marriage or we are married, whatever the case may be. And you might have an issue with that. Mm -hmm. Instead of me dancing around it and trying to like maybe help mom a little bit less or hide the fact that I'm helping mom or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. because I'm worried that like, damn, if my wife my wife might have an issue with it, my wife might say, like, hold on, we trying to do this over here, mm -hmm. you know, you can't really, you know, be worried. You can't really try to save everybody, whatever the case may be. And mom might be a bad example. Let's say it's my brother. Mm-hmm. Cause mom might be, cause people might be listening to this like, motherfucker want to help your mama, like that bitch. Like, <laughs> but let's say it's my brother, right? Uh huh. And uh, I want to help my brother. This is my brother. And this is so crazy because, yeah. So we related. So let's get to it. So like, let's say this is my big brother. He always looked out for me as a shorty. Whatever I got, whatever love for my big brother, and I just want to help this nigga. And I'm pouring bread into him. But mm -hmm. it's it it could be. All right, we we can't go. Damn, I ain't got it to go on a trip mm -hmm. for New Year's. We can't I go on a New Year's trip because mm -hmm. I had to hold this nigga down. And you might be looking like, hey, that's a grown ass man. G. You got to da da da. So it's like, at this point, it's about kind of testing your boundary, but as well as setting mine. Because if mm -hmm. I tiptoe around it and try to not help him or try to hide the fact that I'm helping him, eventually, Once that blow up it's going to it's, it's it's, gonna come to a it's head. It's going to be. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Eventually, it's gonna come to a head because it might be a situation where this nigga might need so much help. We like, oh, this nigga gotta come live with us or whatever. Four minutes, get back on the street, whatever the case may be. And now it's gonna come to a head. So I feel mm. like put the cards on the table immediately and test that person' boundaries to see, like, because if, if they say, you know what, no, because even, I ain't fucking with right. that. Then it might be like, now we need to revisit whether we can actually be compromise. Or not because, what, because after boundaries comes compromise. Yeah. Like, if you say no, because this is my situation, and I'd be like, hmm, you might not, you might not be the person for me. Like, if you don't value what I value, you don't care about what I care about, you might family, not be the person for me. Like, if say, say you and your partner like opposites, and yeah. you instilled in family, they might not be, so they might not understand why you would do something like that because they yeah. don't. They ne would never had an opportunity to be yeah. there for. And some some people just might be a little selfish at the point where they can see mm -hmm. it with their family. They can't, but see, but it they can't see it with yours because they you like, oh, I mean? your family. Nah, I like my family. Your like sister, your, yo, yo, you might have a a, a, a sister, or a cousin, or something that a nigga start beating her up, and she, now she needs somewhere to stay. I ain't gonna be like, like, nah, she right. can't stay. Like you know what I'm saying? So it's like it, yeah. it's it's a lot of shit like that though. Like. That can happen in a situation. It might even be sexual. It might be like you know you went to some freaky shit, mm -hmm. and your girl not into <laughs> it. You got to put the cards on the table because at some point you're gonna be sexually frustrated, and either you're gonna get the cheating, or you're gonna get the, whatever you're gonna do. But at the end of the day, like just put the cards on the table and test her boundaries and see like, X. is she with this shit? And if she not with, yeah, this I shit, know a lot of dudes they like cheated because like their girl wouldn't like give them head. Give them head. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I won't lie because like okay That's so cool. I was like dealing with um were they like in high school? No, hell no. I was actually talking to this dude for a short period of time and he had told me why like that's pretty much why him and his ex-girlfriend had broken up. Right. Because um she wouldn't she just was <laughs> He was like doing everything like and she just right. wouldn't do it. And then she ended up cheating. On top of that? On top of that. Did she suck his dick, though? I know that's the first thing he asked. Gee, it wasn't even about that. It was the fact that she was talking super freaky to the nigga. <sighs> so whether you suck the nigga dick yet or not, she was on some shit like, I want you to do da 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 da, -da this, that, and he like, bitch, right. you won't even give me head. Like, you ain't a freak at all. Oh, me. my God. So I'm just, I just yeah. don't do it for you, huh? Like, wow. Yeah. So they end up breaking up, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward. And I'm coming back from that one. I ain't going to lie. Fast forward, I deal with the nigga. And I understood it, sis. Why? Hold on. Break I'm, it down. I'm not sucking. I'm not. If your dick little, like, I'm not giving you head. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Damn. And I felt terrible for him. Because I'm just like, damn, I know you loved her. Really deeply, and she probably How, loved like, you too. Look, this question. She probably loved you too, but I'm God saying, damn! Like, like, how small do a dick gotta be for you? To he not was too suck big it? for his dick to be that small, so it was just like. Mm -mm. So, so dick size is relative to the size of the person. It can, it can be, yeah. So, like, if that if a smaller nigga had that same dick, you would have sucked it. 
No, not necessarily <laughs> say that. It probably just wouldn't. I wasn't sucking it, period. It wasn't my nigga. It wasn't my dick to be sucking. But No, no I'm saying like, <laughs> all right, let's say the situation was that though. Like we just talked about the the the, the parameters and yeah. size and all this shit. Yeah. So if it was so, a smaller nigga with the same dick, would you have gave me it? Possibly. This nigga possibly. was six nine. Like his dick was too small for him to be that big. Okay. It was just like I'm just curious to how, it. like, because we, we talk, you know, like, girls like a small dick. I've never heard, like, anything <laughs> like about, like, like, in regards to sucking a dick, though. I never heard a, a like girl Like, girl speak. be like, yo, shit, little, I'm not sucking that motherfucker. That's crazy. I have said that on the show last season. I don't think y'all, I don't know if you remember about the Aries nigga. When I say that nigga, he how was the one that wouldn't bring a toy in a be, bedroom. Though. I want to like, I want to know how and small I want, do a small dick got to be for you to not suck. I'm not like, what do you want I, me like, to do? I feel like you said you said. I, I do kind of remember you saying that, but maybe I didn't yeah. take it serious. No, but like, I'm that's serious. Cra- how small do a dick? I'm not be fucking. Not and I, that with that I, that nigga's my boyfriend. Is it like, like a I thumb? Was, and I was just like, oh, I'm not doing that. Is it like a thumb? Wait, a nigga was your boyfriend and you ain't suck his dick because he was small. Yeah, we was together for like a week. And then I this broke the up same with him. nigga or this a different nigga? This the Aries nigga that wouldn't let me bring the toy in the bedroom. I'm saying this the same nigga that had got who the girl he got cheated on. No. So this another nigga who did right. you the so Aries multiple, that I talked about it's last been multiple niggas who dick you wouldn't suck because it was small. Yeah. Mm. Is it like a thumb? Like what? what what's happening? Yeah. Like hard. No. I'm not trying to disrespect nobody. Soft. On this show. Okay. Soft. So when it got hard, you still wouldn't suck it. No, <laughs> it still wasn't big enough. Because it like like it's... it like okay okay. I just can't not like <laughs> I can't I can't really go so deep into detail like I expressing how I be like, sucking dick. Like I'm not I mean, trying to be I, on here. No. I just might as well be provocative right now. <laughs> All right, like... listen, but we want to know though. Okay, so like me sucking dick, like I I want to use my hands, like I want to. Be okay. into it, like I wanna. How I'm supposed to do that if it's not really like I can't even get do, into the motion? Like there's not you really anywhere get one to go. Hand on it? No, no. Because I remember Ramy said something like, "Okay, no. I remember when Ramy said because we we asked Ramy like, um, or the top. I think we was doing the the, mm-hmm. the, uh, the dick size mm-hmm. and ego mm-hmm. show or whatever. If you haven't seen, please the, go watch that. The dick size <laughs> and ego. What's the name of the show? That was show, what was the name of the show? Like men's. No, it was connecting like connecting their dick size to their ego or some shit. What's the name of that I show? I don't remember. It's something about pen, it's probably says penis size and ego. If you search that shit, that was a great fucking show. Amazing One show. One of the best shows we ever did. Thanks. All right. Anyway, <laughs> um, that was like last season, so it's not that far down if you're scrolling through Apple or nothing like that. So anyway, um Ramy has said something like she she don't know inches and shit like that, mm-hmm. but she judge it based on if she put one hand on it and then put the other hand, if it's still dick coming out, it's cool. But if it's not, then we have a it's problem. A no-go. Because I'm not finna just sit here with this one hand right. and suck your dick. Right, right, right. But you saying with that particular person, you couldn't put two hands on it either. No. I mean, you couldn't put one hand on it. Is what you it mean. was. It was probably like one, like literally. And if I wanted to kiss the tip, like it was sticking out a little. Damn. And I mean, I'm saving myself because y'all know I do have big hands. Ever running joke, but still, hands, nonetheless. Yeah. It just but they're not, not that big to the point where it's like the Aries nigga. I tried to help him save himself by do it with the toys. He didn't want to. He was egotistical. I guess bitches told him his dick was good. I remember this. I remember this. The other nigga, the experience kind of saved him. Oh, he could fuck. It was other shit. He like it was the head. toys. It was the head. It was the. He was just down like, for doing shit. Yeah. So I'm like, maybe you understood that your dick was little, and you yeah. knew like you had to compensate, you know, in other areas. Right, right. But I ended up just simply not liking him. I was a person. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Got you. Understood, man. I don't even know what we were supposed to be talking about, but you got any other talking points for us today? <laughs> no. Cam's Corner. <laughs> Cam's Corner. As you guys know, always sticking to the topic. Um, I just honestly feel like we spoke on personal boundaries in almost every show so far this season um so saying that to say personal boundaries are literally how we navigate through life like boundaries are how we get through life boundaries with anything friends family work yourself relationships whatever 
um, just stand firm on them. I remember saying in my last Cam's Corner, when you set your boundaries, you don't let anybody cross them because the moment that shit gets shaky and people start seeing that they can step on your toes, when you telling a nigga like, I ain't doing this shit no more, and then you back at his crib. Like, it's like, oh, this nigga like, oh, shit. Okay. So it's like, set them boundaries. Stand firm. Don't let nobody cross them. And that's how you keep yourself from being in situations that is sticky or situations you can't get out of or situations that hurt your feelings. Even go as far as break your heart, whatever. But boundaries is how we navigate through life. And don't let liking somebody make you go against your grain because it's only bad for you. They they the ones getting the benefit. I mean, unless they fucking up their boundaries too, then really neither, neither one of y'all are benefiting from this situation. So yeah, like I said, set them, stand on them, 10 toes, don't let nobody cross them. Cam's corner. Absolutely. And that goes to my cheat code as well. It's really the same thing. It's, and I said this for cheat code on another thing. Mm-hmm. You can't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. You can't give a fuck. You got to love yourself more than these people that you're trying mm-hmm. to date, that you feel like is so dope, that you're trying to pursue, that you're trying to court, whatever. Yep. At the end of the day, it's like you set the boundary, you stand on it, and it's going to, you're going to thank yourself in the long run. Yep, absolutely. You're going to thank yourself in the long run. And if you don't stand on the boundary, you're going to regret the shit. In, in the, the long run. Really damn near in the short run. I was going to say like, probably tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to feel like so, yeah, that's, that's going to be like, quick. Yeah. Oh, I feel like a goofy and da-da-da. When you're doing shit genuine from the heart. You're trying to blame the other person when in reality. Like exactly. Should like, just set a boundary. So, yeah. So it's stand on that shit, whatever it is, and don't worry about the outcome. Mm-hmm. Just understand why you're doing what you're doing. Don't worry about how this person is going to respond to it. If this person mm-hmm. is going to leave your life, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, because the bound setting boundaries do kind of weed people out. It's like, damn, that's go, the point of them. It, 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 it filters. That's people. what I say. Like, they're and the navigation. It, is you get life. left with the people that deserve to be here? Period. At the end of the day, and it's, it's not going to be a lot of people. The people and, that don't find that difficult. For sure. So, this go to friendships too, because I, yep. I I got so many female friends or female associates, whatever. Who think that they're supposed to have a ton of friends. And that's not at true. At the age that we at right now. You're not going to have a lot of friends. Hell dude. no. You know what? what I'm saying? So it's like, you set your boundaries and you stop accepting bullshit and weird behavior from people. It might be three bitches left. left. If that. Maybe. You might be lucky. You Maybe. might get one. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Maybe. And Especially hold on tight. Women. Especially with women. <laughs> yes, so for sure. At the especially. end of the day, like, you know, mm. when you don't set boundaries, them the people who friends with everybody. Them the people who jump in from click to click or them the yep. people who... Got all these friends, but it's all—it's always some weird shit happening. Mm-hmm. Or you know, they at, on a trip into it with each other. Uh, they at dinner and got to figure out Can't arguing even. over bills mm-hmm. and dumb shit like that. You know Sneak this in each other. Because they trying to be cool with everybody. They're not crazy. setting boundaries for themselves. Yep. So it could be, apply to friendship. It could apply to relationship. It could apply to everyday, everyday life. Set the boundaries. Set it and forget it. Remember that. Set it and forget it. Remember no. that. No. You don't. You don't remember the cooking jo- You remember Set It and Forget It, bro? <laughs> the rotisserie infomercial. The rotisserie chicken infomercial. Y'all old. You put the sale. chicken in there Bye. and turn it down. I'm only going to be 30. And like Set It and Forget It? No. Wow. Y'all old. All right. He wouldn't. Bro wouldn't. Because y'all old. The both You're of 30, bro. Not yet. In three hours, you'll be 30. That's it for today, <laughs> man. Terry Rosen Podcast. FCN. Uh, pod.com. Check out all of the shows. All of the shows are coming out. Man's Perspective, Provocative, Her Not Matters, No Designer, Bonding with Boogie. Bow. Of course, we're here. Bow. Cam's here. Get some killer cocktails. Go get that Terry Roseland podcast. I mean, yeah, go get that pod class so you can figure out how to put out a podcast. And also, buy some, merch. Buy some fucking merch off of FCNPod.com. Also, what else, are we, what else we need them to do? Oh, um, send. Wait, are you doing the random thing now for the? Oh, the matchmaking. Yeah, shit. yeah. If you, all my guys out there, I need y'all to send me y'all non-negotiables and y'all physical type, so I can match make you. I have thirty women who wanna who sent me their information, and I'm looking for guys to match them with, but no guys have reached out yet. You know because what I'm so never mind, we ain't gonna go there. So <laughs> I need y'all to reach out with that information, so I can match y'all with some young ladies. <laughs> 
the world is a lot smaller now. A lot of people are working from home. A lot of people getting money. A lot of these chicks getting money. So you might, I might end up matching with a chick from New York. But a lot of the, all of them are saying like, shit, I'm down to travel. I'm down to kick it. Nigga. I'm down fun. to pull up in the nigga city and, and go on a date or whatever the case may be. So at the end of the day, shit, let's do it. Let's make it happen, man. And, and it's, it's some bad chicks though, too. Like it's yeah. some nice. Look, that's why you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, like you I did. Like, yeah, you did. Yeah, like and I was they surprised. Were, I was they surprised. Were, I was like, oh, I'm like, damn. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Not, I'm not even on no judgmental shit, but I'm surprised. Like, damn, I'm surprised she she ain't got no niggas like, like shit. She got a nigga. Like, damn, like, I know ooh. niggas blowing her shit down. I know her DM lit right now. Yeah, I'm talking about these chicks bad. They traveling. They all over the country. Got money, they in they, countries they, I ain't mm, never heard of. Right. Before. I'm damn. What what the Saint fuck? Saint Lucia and goddamn I'm like, shit. All <laughs> yeah, but it's for real lit, though, man. get to it. Come on, man. Look seriously. Cozy season is upon us. Cuffing season. Like, come on, Valentine's Day. Like. Get outside, y'all. Like for sure, for sure, man. And uh, tomorrow is Cam's birthday. Happy birthday to Cam! Tomorrow is my Capriversi. Shout out to the Noobs. Hey, and we out.